Hello there folks, welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash and I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. Now today is something of unusual uh, video for me. I don't typically do reviews of singular books which I've read. I do the occasional compendium of books that I've read which I would suggest for you. However, I know many of you guys may be heading off on a summer vacation, maybe a bit of a holiday, and you're starting to think about perhaps buying some reading material, as I was a little while ago. And I picked this book, which was outside of my normal comfort zone. It is Days at the Morisaki Bookshop. Uh, it is a original Japanese book translated into English. Now the author is Satoshi Yagisawa, and it was translated by Eric Ozawa. Uh, it's be, it was published just over a year ago in July 2023. Now, as I say, it's not my typical book. I tend to wear, uh, read rather, um, fiction which is kind of action oriented or non-fiction which is historical in nature. Those are the typical trends which I go on. However, every so often I think it's really important to challenge your mindset and maybe to pick up a book which you wouldn't ordinarily read. I mean I joined a book club in my local town specifically for that purpose which uh, makes me read books that I would never choose from the shelves of a bookstore. And in that mindset, I walked into my local bookstore thinking, I'm going to pick something today which I would never ordinarily have picked. And I picked a book which I selected entirely because of its colourful jacket and it sounded something I might be interested in. So that is what brought me to the days at the Morisaki bookshop. Now I have enjoyed a few Japanese books which have been translated into English. There is something about maybe the language, maybe the ideologies of that mindset of the Japanese transferred into English, which seem to have worked well. Now this book takes us on a character journey. It's set in the Morisaki bookshop, which is from a, a, an actual place in Japan. A, it's called the Kimboko uh, district of Tokyo, which is apparently, never been to Japan, but is apparently quite well renowned as a, a district which is full of uh, secondhand bookstores. Now, there's a small cast of characters here. Our main protagonist is a girl called uh, Takako, who is a 25 year old female, uh, and basically, she is your standard sort of young 25 year old working in an office. She has a love affair with a co worker, but she discovers that that co worker has been doing the dirty on her and actually he intends to marry another person. Now, this causes her total emotional breakdown. She has a bit of, uh, you know, a, a, a total burnout. She um, it tips her into a very deep depressive state in which she gives up her job and she spends her days lying in bed sleeping for sort of 12, 14 hours a day. Classic symptoms of depression. She doesn't know what to do with herself. She is at a loss and she's contacted out of the blue by her uncle called Satoru. Now Satoru is uh, an uncle that she hasn't seen very often throughout her life, but he owns the Morisaki bookshop and he contacts her probably at the, the, in, uh, the sort of instigation of her parents who are worried about her and says, why don't you come down and stay with me at the Morisaki bookshop? There will be no rent. You can live here for free. All you have to do, cover a few shifts in the bookstore and you know, get yourself back together. Now she is reluctant, but she does need to reduce her costs because she's not working. She's paying rent on her apartment. It's not going to work. So she moves into the Morisaki bookstore and she describes it as a musty old bookstore, somewhat, uh, you know, run down. It's been in the family about three generations. Uncle Satoru is a bit of an eccentric character. He's a bit of a, a tragic figure, really. Uh, his wife had left him under unexpected circumstances or just no circumstances five years prior. And he lives a pretty sort of pathetic life uh, from what she can see. And she moves into the store in this room above the bookstore, which is full, a storeroom basically, of musty old books. She describes it as stinking of old books. She clears a space for her bed, her futon, and she kind of gets down to passing the days. But eventually she starts picking up the books and reading them. 
and this is really uh, what made the book somewhat cozy and endearing to me as somebody who has had a renaissance of reading myself in my later years. She goes on a journey of life discovery through reading. Um, she opens some of these old second-hand books and I think in one of them it describes where she finds a, pre a pressed flower amongst the pages and it makes her think about the prior life of the book and who had read it before. And it reminds me of my own young life as a reader because in my very young years books were expensive, they were a commodity. I couldn't afford to buy them willy-nilly. So because I lived near the town library in my town, I went through all of the books in the library and I remember taking them home and occasionally you'd find you know a, a note scribbled in a margin or a bookmark that somebody had left in there and that distinctive smell of a pre-owned book not pleasant but distinctive and I would think about who's read this book before you'd look at that cover note at the beginning of the book wouldn't you and you'd see all the stamps in there and you would see that people had read the book 20, 30 times and it made you think of the journey the book had been on, whose, whose homes had it been in, whose hands had it been through, whose minds had the book illuminated. And of course you can guess the story, I'm not going to tell you the specifics, but it turns her journey around. She becomes a better version of herself. She gets to know the characters, the regulars who come into the bookstore and these little interactions help us to understand her character arc as she goes from devastation to fully functioning adult again. She builds relationships. Even at the end a relationship starts to take form that it appears may bear fruit in the future. Now there's a little kicker to the end because the book's in two parts. The first part is about that character story but then the final part is where out of the blue her long lost auntie returns. Auntie Momoku, I had to read her name because I forget these Japanese names. This is the auntie who'd done a runner from Uncle Satoru five years hence. She comes back after five years missing and eventually Takako is a little bit reluctant to allow her into her life but the auntie suggests a journey where they go hiking up a mountain, staying in a tea house and they get to know each other. Secrets are revealed and a bond is built. And it is an endearing story of one young girl in her mid-twenties weathering the storms of life. It's kind of a cosy book, it's an easy read, it's only about 150 pages in duration. You can read it in just one or two days if you put your back into it, uh, or you can take a bit longer if you prefer to read over a longer time. But I just found it a cosy, endearing read which left me feeling happy. Now earlier this month, and I record this in July 2024, and the sequel has already been published just a few days ago. It's called More Days at the Morosaki Bookshop and you can tell how much I enjoyed this one because I've ordered that book and it arrives today from Amazon. So it's a little tip for you gents, if you're looking for something different which will expand your mindset, which maybe isn't the sort of book you'd ordinarily pick up, that's the one reason why I selected this, something different. The parameters of the mind are much deeper than we imagine but we'll only get there if we push against the boundaries. Days at the Morosaki Bookshop is a book which did that for me. I hope you may enjoy it too. Now if you've enjoyed this video give us a like, subscribe, drop me a comment, drop me an email, buy me a coffee, become a patron, whichever you like. It would help me to help you. Until the next time, happy reading and I'll see you again very soon.